Never give up. Never surrender. It's Galaxy Quest. <laughs> back to my what of stuff my name it be paul mount time for a retro movie review and today we're going back to 1999 to look at galaxy quest the science fiction comedy film directed by dean pariso written by david howard and robert gordon and starring tim allen sigourney weaver the late great alan rickman tony shalhoub sam rockwell and daryl mitchell this is a film I haven't seen for ages. I saw it when it came out. I saw it a few years later. I haven't seen it for probably 20 years. First thing that struck me about this film, my God, it hasn't aged. Visually, it has not aged. And I went into it thinking, well, 1999, not exactly the early days of CGI and computer animation and so on. But, you know, it, it was sort of within the first decade, I suppose. And I thought this is going to look a bit shonky. But it looks beautiful. I mean, I watched it on Blu-ray and it looks great. I think there's possibly one sort of space scene which looks a little bit e, which is the bit when Tim Allen's character is sort of projected back to Earth having been abducted by the Thermians ooh painful misses and that's slightly looked a bit you know that could could be better but the rest of it is fantastic the space scenes are brilliant um, the rock monster creature looks fantastic the little hostile hissy aliens that they meet on a planet look great there are some computer images of their sort of water effect when they're transported it looks really good the prosthetics for saris and the aliens looks so good so that was the first thing that really knocked me out about this film that it, it stands up so well and hats off to everybody because this only cost 45 million dollars and it looks 200 million dollars by today's standards so thumbs up what's it about then i hear you ask well you know because you've seen it obviously uh, tim allen plays jason nesmith he's an actor who played commander peter quincy taggart commander of the NCEA ship protector in a science fiction series called Galaxy Quest that was cancelled years before. And the rest of the cast, who include Sigourney Weaver as Gwen McDemarco, Alan Rickman as Alexander Dane, Tony Shalhoub as Fred Cowan. Um, they've been living off the show ever since, doing public appearances at conventions and growing ever more bitter about their one shot of success that was taken away years ago. But they're eking out a living doing these things. They've all got their various issues. Sigourney Weaver is frustrated by the fact that her character was pretty much just a sex symbol in the show. Alan Rickman is the uptight British actor, Shakespearean actor. He's really frustrated that this is what he's known for, wearing this prosthetic thing on his head and spouting these phrases. They don't get along very well. They, they're all frustrated. They're particularly frustrated with uh, Jason, who played Commander Peter Quincy, who is the big I am and he's on stage and it's all about him. It was his show and he's the star of the show and they're sort of pushed to the sideline. So when we meet them, they're not really particularly happy with their lot. And Tim Allen himself, he's he gets drunk and he gets stroppy with his fans. You know what fans of science fiction are like because this is all sort of a, a play on Star Trek, really, and possibly Star Wars to an extent. Science fiction fans do take it all very, very seriously, and they know the ins and outs of the stories, and they expect the actors to as well. And I've heard Doctor Who fans say this, that fans will come up to them at conventions and say, you know what, episode three of Pyramids Mars, when you said this? Well, in that last episode, you said something which contradicts that. What's that about? But the actors don't, you know, the actors act. They're not invested in the way that the fans are. And particularly that is a thing in science fiction. And this is reflected very well here. During the convention, uh, Jason meets up with a bunch of very odd people in sort of silver grey uniforms. And they speak in a very strange voice and they want him to help them on their planet. And of course, he thinks they're just mad fans. Until he gets drunk and they turn up the next morning and they beam him up into a spaceship. Again, he thinks it's all part of an act. He's been taken to the set that these people have made. And he suddenly realises that he's actually in space aboard a spaceship. These people are Thermian. They're being dominated by a reptilian humanoid race led by Rothar Saris, played by Robin Sachs. And he suddenly realises that all of a sudden 
he's in the middle of his TV show. And it turns out that the Theomians have been watching transmissions of the show and they think they're actual historical records. They have no concept of entertainment or television. They think that this is all history that they're watching and they turn to the cast of Galaxy Quest to help them beat Saris and the aliens. But they all end up back on the spaceship and... A fairly typical Star Trek science fiction adventure takes place with him teaming up with the Thermians. The rest of the cast will coming round to help beat Saris and the Reptilians. And it, and it's all great fun. It's it's very funny. There's some very funny lines. There's some very funny moments. There's, there is a great chemistry between Alan Rickman. How we miss Alan Rickman. What a great actor. With Tim Allen. It's a sort of resentment. The bitter resentment that, that spills over. And... They clash occasionally and you know, butt heads and things, but it's it's very funny. It, it it picks up lots of those science fiction conventions, conventions rather than a convention of things like the red shirt, the character who dies immediately. We have Sam Rockwell here playing Guy Fliegman. He's he's their handler of conventions, but he actually appeared in an episode of the show as a red shirt. The characters who just get bumped off. They don't remember him, of course. And he's a bit bitter about that. He's a struggling actor. I think he says at one point. Uh, I'm, I'm just an extra. Nothing wrong with being an extra, by the way. And so he plays with all those conventions. There's a really nice bit when Jason and Gwen have to move their way through the spaceship to get to this uh, device, which is the trigger for what's all going on. And they have that huge revolving fan type thing, which you get in all science fiction things. And these big ridiculous metal things that clank, clank down and they have to dodge in between them and they even mentioned that why are these things what's the point of these things these things are always here so there's lots of things that science fiction fans will pick up on the little cliches and tropes of the genre that i think that uh, are well observed and they are not taking the mickey out of them they're sort of um, acknowledging them in a, in a fun sort of way because these are the things of sort of spaceship science fiction you have those cliches it's a great fun film, and as I said, the thing that really astounded me is how damn good it looks. It looks really slick, it looks really modern, it hasn't aged at all, which is just fantastic. It's really charming as well. And again, as I said with my review of Twisters yesterday, it's nice to watch a film where everybody's not effing and jeffing, because that does get a bit tiresome. It's not big or clever, and it loses its impact when people are effing and jeffing all the time. And this is just nice people again, having this incredible adventure in space. Really funny, really enjoyable, and it has become a cult in its own right. I know there is a documentary which I've got and I've never got around to watch it. I may watch it soon called Never Surrender. I am surprised they haven't done a sequel. I think there's been talk of a sequel. I, I think it's probably too late for that now, to be honest. Alan Rittman is no longer with us, and I think the cast have all sort of aged out of that sort of thing now. But everyone in the cast is at their best I think they're all giving great performances and having a really good time the script is sharp and funny and well observed and it's just great fun there's a happy ending because the Thermians are saved and Galaxy Quest returns for a new series great fun I'm really glad I watched that again Galaxy Quest a classic retro movie and I'm going to give that 8.5 out of 10 8.5 out of 10 Galaxy Quest right thank you for watching this video if you've enjoyed it and I don't see any reason why you wouldn't have why don't you press that subscribe button for god's sake click that subscribe button and then you'll be notified of new videos coming up you don't have to watch them just subscribe to the channel that's all i ask what are your thoughts on galaxy quest as i said i was really surprised to see it now and see how well it stands up let me know what you think of it leave a comment down below thumbs up like and subscribe tell your friends i'll see you soon but until i do you keep taking the stuff